Welcome to the second episode of my trip to London. This is the Inner Temple Garden, a somewhat hidden gem in the middle of the city. A friend of mine lives very nearby and took me to see the garden, so I thought that I would share it with you too. This is what I love about London. I've been coming here for years, yet there is always something new to see. Hi everyone and welcome to Belgravia, one of the most stunning settings in London filled with history and grandeur. The streets here have the most stunning houses and the history of this part of town is fascinating. Today I would like to take you around this special part of town that feels like a village filled with stories. Join me on this tour where we'll visit some special friends and enjoy the city together. Belgravia is an affluent neighbourhood in central London, developed in the early 19th century by Richard Grosvenor, 2nd Marquess of Westminster. It was developed so that aristocracy could be close to the court at Buckingham Palace, which is just a stone's throw away. These stuccoed mansions, which to me resemble elegant wedding cakes, are so beautiful to look at, and I love walking around the area. Belgravia has now become even more famous thanks to Julian Fellows, creator of Downton Abbey, and his novel of the same name which has been developed into a TV show. Have you ever noticed these interlocking seas when walking around London? The official line is that it stands for City Council, however, legend has it that it is a homage to Coco Chanel who had a ten-year affair with the Duke of Westminster. The Star Tavern in Belgravia is infamous as the setting for the planning of the Great Train Robbery in 1963. Belgravia is such a beautiful area for shopping, eating and drinking and I would highly recommend that you visit. So I thought that I would come here to Stuart Parvin. If you don't know about Stuart, he is a very famous couturier. He has a royal warrant, which means that he makes clothing for Her Majesty the Queen. He's got this beautiful boutique in the heart of Belgravia. So let's go inside and meet Stuart and see what he's got to tell us about his career and all of the wonderful things that he's done over the years. So Stuart, thank you so much for letting us come and see you in your boutique. Oh, it was a pleasure. And how, can you just give us a background about how you got started and how you... Oh, it's a very long story, but basically when I was a child, I wanted to, like from the age of about five, I knew I wanted to be a fashion designer. Then loads of other things came along. And eventually when I left school, I went to art college, did a year at foundation course. And then I thought I wanted to be an interior designer, mm -hmm. but actually fashion was much more my thing and I've done it ever since. So did you ever explore interior design or you just... Only in my own home. <laughs> yeah. And here and in my other shops. And so how did you begin in terms of, did you have to, did you learn everything or just about designing? At college I did, I studied in Edinburgh doing fashion. Oh. So I, there I learned, I thought I learned a lot. Then when I left, I went to work for somebody called Donald Campbell. Mm. He used to make lots of the clothes for the Princess of Wales and like in the recent series of The Crown, which yes. I haven't seen. There's yeah. like, he said it's really funny because they've, there's loads of things, they've reinterpreted almost exactly some of the dresses wow. he used to make. So I went to work there where I was like a sort of a junior. I used to work at a shed in Chelsea, which was great fun. And I was there for about three years. Then I left and I did um, like real manufactured wear. I did evening wear and occasion wear for sort of CNA and Wallace and Miss Selfridge and things like that. And I did that for three years and I got, I had completely had enough of it. And I wanted to go back to doing the, what I do now. Mm -hmm. And I started my shop sort of when I was about 28 at number 14, sort of four doors along the road. So you started in Belgravia? Yeah, I, started, I literally I started what's now Harry's Shoe Shop. So starting in Belgravia, was there a reason why you chose this location and how is it kind of good for, to, what, what's the purposes of well, being when, here? Well, when I first started, well, I literally, my father was in property, so we looked around and tried to find somewhere to be, and we looked in Beach and Place, and like it was, Beach and Place was too expensive, so we found the shop which actually was somebody called Ian Thomas who used to make clothes for the Queen. He'd been at Hartnell and then he started on his own when Hartnell closed. And he, he was in my old shop. It had been empty for a couple of years after he died. So we came there and said, oh my God, I, I sort of knew it. And mm. my old boss was around the corner. 
and it's a perfect location. You've got Wilton Crescent at one end of the street, you've got Lambs Street and you've got Land Square at the other, you've got Harvey Nichols Harrods a few minutes walk away. And in those days it was full of antique shops. Mm -hmm. But they've sort of the wonderful thing about the Grove Estate they've kind of now curated it. So there's all different things. There's there's the hairdressers, there's the beauty things, but there's there's shoes, there's bags, there's other clothes, there's yeah. amazing pantechnica at the end of the road. But the whole of Belgravia is such a it's like a proper local neighbourhood, not mm -hmm. it's not sort of in a way it's not a destination so much as that people come to you from out of London. Yeah, they it's actually, it's, a, it's a proper neighbourhood. You moved from that store to here. How so many I moved years from ago? 14 to number 9. Um, it was two, it'll be three years in September. Mm -hmm. and so this is a much bigger place. Yeah, we had a, we also had a shop then in Beach and Place. And so we, we had, we'd had our bridal store in Beach and Place. So we closed that knowing that we were going to come here. And then sort of get arranging the lease because this hadn't been a, a shop before. It was an office building. So then we sort of spent about four months refurbishing it, sort of making it look a little bit different and as it is now. And we finally made the move. I'm so happy because we, everything's much more segregated. Yeah. The lady who was just here was saying it's so nice because you've got sort of different rooms with different types of clothes in. So it's, it's much nicer. And in this building, is this where everything happens or is there another place where you actually make the clothing and stuff? If only this could be where it all happened. There's, there is, in the basement, we have a workroom where we do, when the wedding dresses are made, they, once they've been made, they don't leave, they stay here and they have all their final alterations done. Mm. And we alter a few of the clothes, but we have a studio in Acton where we actually make the whole, whole collection. So my kind of thing with YouTube is how to make life more beautiful. So what advice do you have for people or tips to, to how they can do that? Everyone thinks that they need to get dressed up for special occasions. But I, what, one of the things we sell a lot of are clothes that are not just for like going to a wedding or going to something but clothes for every day mm. and having why have clothes only made for 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 special things that you only wear once or twice why not have clothes made for going to waitrose and mm. going to the hairdresser yeah. and we have a look that's what a, that's what my best clients do and they sort of they embrace it and they we can make clothes that almost look quite mundane and ordinary but they fit them perfectly and they know that when they go to the wardrobe they take out something that really does fit them and, and works for them and works for their lifestyle. Yeah and I think when you've got that it's all it's all about how you feel because you only see yourself in the morning getting dressed but then it's when you're walking around and feeling how you feel the confidence is all about those little tiny things. Oh yeah I mean some people some people some people are really good and some people have a figure that they can go into a shop and they can buy something and they can go to Zara and they can pick out something and it looks amazing it fits them perfectly. Most people, when they get perhaps beyond their thirties or their figure changes slightly, mm -hmm. so having something that's made for you, having making sure that the sleeves are the right length, that the skirt's the right length, that it, the skirt doesn't hang down at the back and right up at yeah. the front, or the, the you can move in it. All of those little things that we worry about for you, you never have to worry about them. Yeah. And then you put them on, and you're comfortable, and you have a sort of confidence that you wouldn't have had otherwise. A lot of designers now only design for really tiny people. And that's kind of very simple because, you know, most thin people look amazing. But to do that for every body type is pretty special. If you, you, could, if you take a supermodel, you can put them in, literally put them in a bin bag, yeah. tie it around the middle, and they are going to look amazing in yeah. it because they have an amazing face, they have an amazing figure, yeah. and they, they are freaks of nature. They are mm. not normal people. Most people who ha aren't happy with the, the way they look. I mean, I know that from sort of my day-to-day -day dealing with people. But if you have something that you put on and you feel confident, and it, it shows your best bits, hides your sure. worst bits, yeah. you're going to feel much happier. Yeah. So could you tell us about a particular career highlight that has been memorable for you? I think probably the most most memorable thing is like sort of, because when I first started doing The Queen, nobody knew, but it was a complete secret. Mm. And she went on tour and she was going to the Caribbean and she had this event, it was a state banquet at the, at the governor's house, and that night there was a power cut. And so everything still had to go, so the, she, she'd already made the announcement that she was wearing the first dress of mine that, she, mm. that she, I'd ever made for her. It was a long, pale blue evening dress. And she came down the stairs, literally lit by candlelight. Like, it was on every news channel, every newspaper in the world, and there she was in the sparkly dress, massive tiara, Diamond necklace, bracelets, spot, and literally everything twinkled. And because the lights had gone out, it made it an even bigger story. Wow. So that's sort of. It's kind of meant to be. Meant to be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So good to meet you after being Instagram friends for. Oh, it's amazing a long to time. meet actually people that you know yeah. so much about and yeah. and follow and so admire. Absolutely. We're going to have a little look round and Please. show everybody 
this beautiful place. Being in lockdown this past year has meant that going on holiday or taking a break has been almost impossible. After a long winter of being locked down indoors, this is the summer to get out and make your escape. Audible is the perfect partner for your summer break to help you unwind and relax. London is filled with parks and outdoor spaces that are perfect for relaxing whilst also enjoying the buzz of the city. When I'm out and about in the more tranquil parts of the city, I love Audible because it provides an extra layer of inspiration, whether that be a fascinating podcast or an audiobook that I can't stop listening to. So I am listening to the most fascinating audiobook that I think you will love, and it very much fits the setting that is Belgravia. Written by Julian Fellows, who also wrote Downton Abbey, Belgravia is a tale of secrets that unravel behind the portico doors of one of London's grandest postcodes. I won't give away too much of the story, but it is one of grandeur and historical moments mixed with drama, secrets and more. To walk here on a summer day having listened to the book is just filling my imagination and I wonder what took place here in the 1840s. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video Right now, for a limited time, Amazon Prime members can save 53% on four months of Audible. That's only $6.95 a month. So, if you're an Amazon Prime member, sign up to get this amazing deal and much more. If you're new to Audible, you can try a free 30-day trial. Just go to www.audible.com slash Nicholas or text Nicholas to 500, 500 to try Audible today. That's www audible.com slash Nicholas or text Nicholas to 500 500. Thank you so much for joining me in London. I really hope that you enjoyed walking around Belgravia with me today and meeting Stuart, who is just the most wonderful man. So thank you, Stuart, for inviting us to the studio to come and see you. Now, when I was in London, it was insanely hot. So even though it was super fun, it was just a real nightmare having to go from one place to the next, catching the tube, walking in the intense heat, and trying to still look presentable on camera whilst you're sweating and really hot. So I hope that I managed to capture a beautiful side of London for you. It's really nice to be back home in Edinburgh. I do love London, but it is a bit intense for me. So to come back to Edinburgh, which is still a vibrant city, but to have a bit of peace and quiet is really ideal and uh, I'm glad to be back. So I hope that you are too. I just want to remind you about my YouTube live event to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, which is on Sunday the 27th of June. That is going to be at 9 p.m. UK time. I will link in the description a countdown that you can click on to remind you to join the event and I would really love to see you there. I hope that we can have a lot of people there to celebrate that together. So stay tuned just now for a little sneak preview of what's to come in the next one. See you. Bye-bye.